Hi right, everybody, this is the Baseball Hut, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the Hut, and welcome back to the Baseball Hut, and hope you like this video, and subscribe. We're going to do, I guess, well, this is sort of a pre-rant. It says rant on it, <clears throat> on the title of this video, but this is a pre-rant. This is a rant that is sort of the preamble to what a full-blown rant could be. I don't want to have to do that next week. Okay, I ranted for a good portion of the of the summer, starting in May, complaining about how bad the Mets have played. I don't want to have to do that video next week. This is a warning. Now, if you're on social media, please share it on Twitter, X, please share it on Facebook, Instagram, text it to your friends. This is a warning to the New York Mets and a warning to their boss, David Stearns, who may not be aware of my work here from the baseball hut. I've been a Met fan since the 80s. I remember the 86 Mets. i never seen a player be this bad in a baseball uniform in my life. Please, David Stearns, do not have this player on this team after next week. Because if he is tendered a contract... Sometime at the end of next week, there will be a response, and it won't be nearly as nice as this video is. Now, who are we talking about? Every team tenders contracts to players that they that they don't have like um, that are on like a last year of a contract or the fourth year of a contract. You know, you know, a lot of times it's pre-arbitration guys or a guy that's in arbitration. Um, a guy that's a good example of a guy that was non-tendered. A contract recently with the Mets, or fairly recently, was uh, Justin Turner. Uh, the, Sandy Olsen did not tend to him a contract after the 2013 season. And uh, we know what happened with him. He went on to move on to the Dodgers. Uh, now, I'm not a big fan of Turner, but that's, that's just an example of what they did. Now, this player, Daniel Vogelback, there's a lot of problems here. <clears throat> and I said this during the summer. That he was a guy that is a symptom of a team that was poorly constructed by the former general manager, Billy Epler. Billy Epler had him on this roster, and he should have gotten rid of him back in May. And this was, in, this was in my opinion. I was way ahead of the curve in terms of where this team needed to be. He was a symbol of this team. Okay? Why this team had been performing so poorly... It's because there was so much responsibility dumped on him in the middle of that lineup. And and it had a domino effect on this ball club. In particular, Peter Alonso. Peter Alonso has been a 255, 256 header. This past year, he had 217, which is a, it's just horrific batting average. All those other numbers were pretty good. Now, we do know this about Vogelback. Vogelback was supposed to be a guy that uh, was supposed to really hit right-handed pitching. And if you have P who's right-handed, and you have a guy that's not hitting right-handed pitching behind you, you pitch around P. You, you give him pitches he can't hit. And I think that's a big reason why his average was so bad. Now, Vogelback has bounced around. He's been with the Mariners, the Pirates, the, the Brewers. Now, Stearns had brought him in, picked him up off waivers years ago, and then had him on the following season. Um, I'm, I don't know how, what his real opinion is. I did not like what I heard yesterday saying that his on-base skills were elite. There is nothing. And the hut means nothing is elite about Daniel Vogelback. The only thing that's elite about him is his appetite. You take that joke any way you want to take it. He, he only has one thing that's elite about him. His girth. You know, let's be honest. And to be honest with you, there is nothing that I see. If, why is he in the major leagues? Now, the Mets held on to him. The word is, the rumor is, is that Buck was forced to use him all the time. It got so bad for Vogelback in terms of what he was doing in May and June. He wasn't hitting at all. Instead of getting rid of him, they gave him a vacation. They gave the son of a bitch a vacation. Why? I don't know. Get him out of here. 
So, I mean, basically, in my view, in terms of the offensive part of this ball club, this got buck fired. Okay? This got buck fired. There's no doubt. I mean, you know, if they got some offensive help out of this lineup, maybe they would have won another five, six games. But this part of the lineup was a black hole. Black hole. Now, Vogelback did not hit a home run for almost two months. The son of a bitch hits a home run at City Field. And he did this. He was like swaggering. Like, you know, like he looked like a gorilla fighting a, 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 a freaking tire in a zoo. In a zoo cage. In a cage. I mean, really. He was doing this. You know, as, he, as a asshole run the first. The hell are you doing this? This I don't know what the hell it was. It wasn't a back, bat flip. He wasn't flipping his bat. He was just sort of, you know. Hey, asshole, you're not a gorilla in a cage. Get the first. Round the bases and come home, asshole. You know. And then the Mets, supposedly, this is the rumor. They tried to trade him at the trade deadline. Who was going to pick him up? Nobody picked him up. So... Instead of like, you know, get him out of here so you can play Mark Vientos. And Mark Vientos should have played on in this lineup. He should have been playing every day as a DH on this club. And and July he was here. August he was here. September, well he didn't play much in September. But he should have been gone in the middle of this year. He should never have gotten on past this team past the All-Star break. Okay. It was Pretty obvious to any Met fan that watched this guy that he was completely and totally useless. He's elite, all right. He's elite, but he's useless. Can't run. Can't play the field. He needs a his own designated runner. Who was Tim LaCastro? That's why he was on this roster. It didn't occur to me until uh, the end of the season. I said, why is Tim LaCastro on this team? And then I re re realized. I realized. He's on this club, and he made this club in April was to be the, the pinch runner for Daniel Vogelback late in the game. That's who he was supposed to be. So you had two guys on this roster that could not do more than one thing on this roster. But Cashel, he was only there to run and get hit by pitches. He can't hit. And then you had Vogelback who can't hit. Can't hit for power. Can't run. Can't play the field. And then you have this third dope, Luis Guillerme, who, you know, so great defensively. So great defensively. Can't hit. Doesn't have any power. Guy can't get a bunt down. The guy had a walk-off hit during, I guess, what was it, July? Or maybe it was August or whatever it was. He, but people don't realize he had a walk-off hit. The guy was supposed to get a bunt down and move runners over. He couldn't get the, he couldn't get the runners over. He had to swing the bat. You talk about serendipity in a, in a, in a play. And, I mean, this is how poorly this, this team was put together. You have one guy, can't play the field, can't run. You have another guy, can't hit, has no power, can only run. And then you have this third guy who can, can't can hit, can't run, can field, but had a terrible defensive season and is always hurt. So you have three guys that were on this club that were pretty much useless as everyday players, as position players. You want to know why Tommy Pham was on the case, has been complaining and bitching and, and pissing and moaning since he went to went to the Dimebacks? Because he was talking about those guys. Vogelback, does he look like a guy that's a hard worker? <laughs> does he look like a hard worker? No. If you look at Luis Guillaume, does he look like a hard worker? No, he doesn't. Sorry. He should be non-tender to contract too, by the way. There are a lot of guys in this club that need to get out of here. Those two in particular, Drew Smith is another guy. If I have to see him throw another slider, I know it's going out. I know it's going over his head and it's going over the wall. You know. I mean, I'll say this. I've been following this team. I love the Mets. I want to see them win. But I'm not going to watch this team knowing that there are players on this team that are a complete total disaster. For three years on this channel... I told you, and I felt I've given you my opinion on these players. I think I've been pretty straight on about some of the ones that are bad. Vogelback is terrible. And I was the first one to say, this guy, you know, I mean, last year, you know, last year was okay. He was able to produce what he needed to produce. But this year was terrible. And you see why he's bouncing around. For two years, 
of this channel. I always complain about Dominic Smith, how bad he was as a player. I took a lot of hits the first year, and well, he's proven that he turned out to be a terrible player. Couldn't hit, and is very uh, average to mediocre overall as a player, as a defensive player. Again, I'll tell you what I think about these players. I am not bound by anything. I don't care who comes on the show. If I have people on, they talk to me online, they follow me. I don't care. I want to see the Mets win. That's all I care about. And that's all you should care about. Okay? Vogelback is a loser. He has proven it that he's a losing player. You got a lot of guys still on this roster that need to go. Now, Stearns has come into the Mets organization. He's gotten rid of a lot of players. Okay? But there are players on this roster that still need to go. Luis Guillaume is a loser. Got to go. Daniel Vogelback, stone cold, big time loser. He has to go. As long as these guys are on this roster, taking up roster spots, this team will never, ever be a winning organization. You cannot have guys that can only do one thing. This is 2024. What do we always hear about? Players that can play multiple positions and be very flexible on the field, offensively, defensively, and everywhere around. The fact that the Mets have had for a full season a guy that could not play the field, he played one minute at first base, can't play the outfield, he cannot run late in the, late in the game, he cannot he cannot go from first to third at all. He can't even go from uh, he can't even go from the on deck circle to home plate. You could throw him out. That's how slow he is. If he started at the on deck circle and ran the first. And you were at first throwing that ball, you would get him out. That's how slow he is and how he can't move. I am not joking. I can guarantee, and I guarantee you another thing. If there was a race between him and Bartolo Colon, Bart would beat him out. I can guarantee it. You'd beat him out. Because Colon was a great athlete. This guy he sucks. Get him out of here. Well, you let me know what you think about this video. This is a pre rant Just imagine if they keep him. I pray to God, please don't let David Stearns get, get hoodwinked by anybody in the Met front office that's still skulking around in these whoop pine assholes. Don't let him fool you. You know what you got in him. Get him the hell out of here. Well, thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to the Baseball Hut, and I'll see you later.